All right, so we back and I just got to get that music down. Oh my goodness. Hey, Miss Nicole Williams, what's hey. going on? What's, what's hot? Hey, Miss X, I am looking at, um, oh my gosh, Andre, you know, Andre Williams, he's a photographer. So he just did this beautiful week. Well, me, him and I, we did this beautiful sh photo shoot while he was my photographer. And I'm just loving these pictures he took of me. Oh, well, you might have so to share a few of them on. Yes, you'll see some of them on um, social media. You know, I'm going to post some of them. Can't post all of them, but I'll post some of them. <laughs> um, okay. But they come out really nice. So if anyone needs photography needs, um, Andre is definitely your man. I think his handle is I see you DMV, and I'm going to tag him when I post. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, make sure you drop a couple of them in the, the group so everybody yeah, knows too. who you are. Uh, so what, what's hot? What's going on? Yeah. Oh, gosh, it's been a horrible two weeks for me and my family. So I don't even know what's going on because we trying to get ourselves together. Um, one of my well, this is actually a good cautionary tale, but a good lesson before dying also. So one of my cousins, um, he is probably around my mom's age. He grew up with my mom. He texted me like two weeks ago and he was like, hey, Nicole, I'm in the hospital. Can't breathe. Da 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 da. I'm like, wait, what? Basically, I'm his next of kin, not married, you know, single, no children. His mom, my auntie passed years ago, you know, five years ago. So he lives alone. So he texts me this and I'm like, wait, what? What's happening? He's like, I'm on oxygen, can't talk. So I'm panicking. I call up to the hospital. They told me when I reached the hospital, they're like, oh, yes, he came in last night because he couldn't breathe. So I'm thinking, oh, he, had, he has COVID. But um, no, he basically had cancer that had metastasized to the liver, the lungs, and the pancreas. Ooh. So at that point, I knew it was fatal because I've been through this so many times before with different family members. Um, so I'm like scrambling. I'm like, I got to get to New York. I got to see my cousin. Got to see my cousin. Not going to let him die alone. So I got up there on a Sunday. He texted me this on Thursday. I surprised him on Sunday. He had no idea I was coming, even though he knows me. So he knew I was coming, but he didn't know what day. Mm -hmm. So I walked in the room. I hadn't seen him in a few years. Last time I saw him was at another family member's funeral. But we typically keep up with each other on like Facebook because he lives in Brooklyn. Okay. So I walk in the room. He's so skinny. He's, you know, he's, he was a normal sized man. He was so little. It was so heartbreaking. And I'm like, oh my gosh, clearly he's been sick. Um, so we just had a beautiful time together and, you know, I went to the store for him and took care of him. And, you know, I was asking him, I said, well, cause I mean, I know you must've felt something before two days ago, what's going on? So he said, yeah, in December, I felt a little funny, but he had just turned 66. So mm -hmm. he was like, I just thought it was old age, even though 66 to me is not even that old. Right. Um, so apparently, and he had, and he was a smoker. I did know him to be a smoker. So I'm guessing he probably had some lung cancer or, you know, something probably had, the cancer had probably been developing in his body for God knows how long. And he never got checked. He's one of the, you know, he's a typical man. He's not going to the doctor ever. He was never going. He probably hasn't been for physical since he was the baby. Wow. Um, you know, he was one of those. He's not going to the doctor. Uh, so he was feeling something, he said, in December. But with, all, with that rapid weight loss, he, he probably was feeling weird things before even then. But he didn't get it checked. So by the time he got to the hospital, it was too late, you know. So he lived after that. I think he lived for a week after that. So he passed away this past uh, Sunday. Uh -huh. um, but, uh, but it was just such a beautiful ending in that he was so grateful, like, he was like, oh, my God, Nicole, you're my angel. I didn't want to tell you I was sick because I knew you would come. And I'm like, of course I would come. I wish you would have told me because I would have been up here before. Um, so, you know, I had a few of our, our family is small. So I had a few like my uncle. I was like, please go up there, uncle. So he came. My dad had the prayer warriors. Come. Like, so he had people in the last week, you know, coming to visit him. He's not the type to share with others. Um, but it was just so sad, but beautiful because the nurses, everyone was saying how sweet he was. And, you know, he was very thankful to anyone that came to help him. He was just extremely grateful. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was sad, but it was also kind of sweet in that he, he, he was at peace. He told me he had no regrets of his life. And that's it. He said, I'm not afraid of my mortality. I just want to know what's wrong with me. Once well, they told me what was wrong. Our condolences yeah. go out to you. 
Yes. So, yes. So we've been um, dealing with that. We got to go back to New York this weekend to clear his apartment out. But um, all of that to say, you know, when, when you don't, when your body is telling you something is wrong because it always gives warning signs, please just go, you know, get it checked. I think a lot of it is fear based. I know him, a lot of people in my family, they're afraid of the bad news because you kind of know it's going to be bad. Um, but some things you can, you know, you can kind of catch maybe in an earlier stage so that it doesn't progress all the way to the terminal stage. Sometimes, obviously, that doesn't always happen. But if your body is talking to you, you must go. You must go to the doctor. Well, you know, some people also struggle with the um, the stress of mm -hmm. knowing because if someone tells you, Okay, you have this, and you know sometimes they even give you a time period. Um, I I know you're familiar Absolutely. with the trip I took with a friend of mine who had oh, cancer, that's right. and they told him that he had a year to live. And I said, well, we're not going to accept that. You know, we're going to do X, Y, Z, and stuff. And he died almost to the day that they told him he had a year. Oh, to live. My and I think it's because, really yeah, I think it's because you really internalize that, and you know. You you, and you definitely manifest it. And so a lot of people really just don't want to hear that at all because they already know it's going to mess up. The, and so now for the whole next year, you're mentally messed up because you're thinking about, oh my God, it's getting closer to that day. Oh, absolutely. You're walking on pins and needles. You're like, am I going to die tomorrow? You're probably having panic attacks. I can't imagine. One of my other uncles who passed away, the doctors were so, like, I literally had to curse them out because every day they were telling my uncle, you're going to die. You're going to die. Like, so I would build him up. I'm speaking life into him. I'm being positive. Okay, uncle, well, let's get a second opinion. Let's do this. Let's do this. Because I do know the mind does manifest sickness and health. And every time I would build him up, up, he would get hopeful. They would come back and say, you're going to die. You're going to die. And so it got to the point where he's like, well, what's the point, niece? I'm just going to die anyway. And I was so upset. I'm like, why do you guys keep telling him this? Okay. After you told him the first time, why do you keep telling him? Right. Um, it does affect you. It affects your mood. It affects your health. It, it's, it's depressing. Your whole outlook on life. Is, Absolutely. Is and, none of us know, and you don't know how long it's going to take. Like even with my uncle, I think they gave him a few. He wound up living months after they gave him. Um, and even with my cousin, the nurse, I loved his nurses. He told one of the nurses, um, I'm terminal. And she said, sweetie, we're all terminal. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> I thought that was so sweet of her because it's true. We are all terminal. We all will have our day and none of us will know when. So it's like, stop speaking death over people. I understand you have to tell them, but you don't have to keep pounding it into them. Right, right. No, because I'm always going to be the person of hope. I'm not going to misguide you, but I'm not going to talk about your demise every second. That's just crazy to me. That is crazy. That is crazy. And so I think that's why a lot of people and primarily men yeah. just that's don't why they don't because know. it's going to break their spirits to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's just, to... but you're right, it's going to break them. And again, though, it just highlights how women, we're the caregivers, we're the, because men don't know how to do, I don't care what nobody say, men don't know how to do nothing right. They don't take care of themselves properly half the time. They always need a woman to kind of be on them half the time, you know. But you know, um, they say that we're, women don't bring anything but sex. <laughs> I'm like, these are the things we bring. We bring in the comfort. We bring in the nurture. We're like, okay, did you go? Did you remember to go um, get that checked? Okay, well, what time? What, you know, right. I mean, that's just to me, natural. I thought all women did that. Maybe not, but to me, that's my natural inclination. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but um yeah it's just crazy even like you know we're taking care of my uncle who has dementia even certain things my dad doesn't remember to do for him I'm like okay well did you do this this and this and he's like oh like their brain just don't be connecting the dots the dots of certain, <laughs> of certain stuff it's like oh you didn't think of that okay <laughs> yeah they need, our help. they need us I don't care what these men say they need a woman's touch okay <laughs> and, you know, I, I was just talking to Ms. Rita. I was telling her that I'm going to do a show um, <laughs> called Evolving to What? And it's going to be about <laughs> relationships and what they're evolving <laughs> to. I'm, I'm uh, working on getting my panels together. You know, I think that'll be a great, really a great discussion. You know, get some <laughs> men with various <laughs> opinions and get some women with various opinions and stuff. I, I may have- You know, to you got to have my boy, in, what is it, Inyatu on there? Me and him going to be bumping heads, but you know, I love him. <laughs> 
I'm, you know what? I might have to put both of y'all on there because you guys do both heads a little bit. <laughs> but no, he thinks I hate him. I totally don't. You know, I welcome controversy, but I got a reply for everything he says. <laughs> so on the on the celebrity gossip tip, did you hear that Lizzo is starting a dance show? Oh my goodness. No, I didn't hear that. I saw something where someone was criticizing her about her flaunting her body around and she was like, I like being fat. <laughs> I did see that, but I didn't hear about the dance show. Yeah, she's uh she's got a dance show coming out. I was and it's all big girls. Okay, well good for her. Yeah, it's a it's a competition and and it's all big girls. It's pretty interesting, you know, because not <laughs> all not all big girls are just round you know you have some big girls that are shapely as well so absolutely yeah you have all kind of big girls on there but that's like the thing that i i saw you know because <laughs> like, she's always she's always around for some reason she's either whatever she's wearing or not wearing she's always mm -hmm. doing something so she has really built her brand you know on her weight her weight and stuff yeah. is kind of her brand no, you're right. It's a huge part of her brand now because at first it was her talent, right? I remember I first saw her in some award show. She was like playing the flute. And I was like, oh, I actually think she's dope. But then I saw it was becoming her also embracing her her size, which I don't think is a bad thing, right? Like maybe she wants to be a role model for women who are a little bigger and help them to gain some semblance of confidence if they don't already have it. Yeah, and I, you know, with the dance show, I think that it is a good thing because it will show, you know, that women of that size are not necessarily, what is that word, sedate? They're not just living a sedentary oh, yeah. lifestyle. You know, they're it's actually dancing not. and moving and they showed one chick doing the splits and stuff. And I'm like, okay, all right, go. Okay, girl. you go, girl. <laughs> no, because we always equate size to health. You can be smaller and be very unhealthy and you can be a little bigger and be, you know, more healthy. So you can't always guess by how a person looks what their health condition is, you know, and I don't care what nobody says. That stuff is hereditary. I have friends that are bigger and guess what? Their mother is bigger and their grandmother's, you know, so it's like that stuff is hereditary. And one of my friends, she's in the gym like, every day she I don't even go to the gym but she's in the gym every day and her body type is just bigger well you know a lot of it it what's hereditary more so is your eating habits mm, so more if so you, if you're eating the the pork fat and the, the fat back and the fat fat and all of that stuff you, you might wind up being a little fat you and know. maybe some people's metabolism I think it has to be a metabolism thing my mother metabolism ate, is like, well all of that stuff. She loved to eat her stuff. Not every day. She didn't eat pork and fats every day, but her genetic makeup, she was never a big woman. She just never was. She was never well, on a diet. You have body types, types as well. You have ectomorphs, yeah. endomorphs, and mesomorphs. Mm, so, that's what it is, the body yeah. type. Right? If you're an ecto, I think it's the ecto. The ecto is like a thin person. They're, they're thinner just, build. Like my, my, my youngest daughter, she's an ectomorph and it, she's been pregnant twice now and she's right back down she's like i would Ooh. love to be a size five i'm like what you're not a five you're like a, yeah. <laughs> you're like a five i ain't been a five since high school right? <laughs> you know and she's 30 now she's had two kids and she's like i wanted to keep some of my weight <laughs> what is she an eight now or not even she's a four i guess so and and what? this child she eats. She yeah eats. that's what i'm saying some people it's like yeah, my cousin is built like your daughter, maybe even skinnier. She has four kids. Oh. She has literally no body fat. Like, there's no stomach. There's no stretch marks. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> oh, we have to find the, all of the rules of human nature and gravity. Like, how do you have four kids and you're skinnier than me with no kids? Like, what is going on here? <laughs> right, right. I, I, I totally agree with that. But yeah, it's the, it's the body type. So depending on your body type, is going to determine, you know, what you, what you like, I'm a mesomorph and we hold weight differently. I mm. usually weigh more than what people think I weigh, but oh. I'm, I'm stocky. I'm stocky and so I build muscle quicker too, which is why I usually weigh more than what people think I weigh. Because it's the muscle mass. Right. It's the muscle. And when I work out, it'll automatic. I automatically will build muscle. Oh. I, can, I can see results pretty quick at the gym where somebody else 
might be at the gym every day, all day, and not see it. And not see it. But yeah, and, like and you said it's the body type. Like oh my gosh, my it. dad is so awful. He's like, when he was dating, that's why he liked my mom. He was like, I used to look at, you know, my father's so real. So that's why maybe also my outlook is different from most women. He's like, listen, I used to look at a woman's mother because that's how I know how, which size she going to be. <gasps> so I was like, oh my God, you're terrible. But it's true. My grandmother was slender for most of her life. I think, actually, no, I take that back. At one, in some of the pictures before I was born, I'm like, hold up, girl. Grandma has some curves. What's going on? Oh, Lord. <laughs> when I saw her, she was so slim. When I knew her, she was very slender and skinny. Um, I knew after her children, my grandmother had three kids. She snapped back after all of the kids. But then I noticed, like in the 70s picture, she had a little bit of weight on her. I was like, what's going on, Grandma? But um, I guess by the time my dad met her, she was back skinny. So. <laughs> okay, okay. So. He was like, I like a slender woman. And so I knew your mom was probably going to be straight because your grandmother was straight. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just crazy how men think and how they quantify women and it's just a lot <laughs> yeah they, they look at your mom and and so my mom was pretty cute you know she was yeah. she was really thin in her younger age and then she got to be thick she wasn't fat but she right, was but thick. thick and so and she was cute you know whatever yeah. and so like it was, I was like oh I can, I can see you gonna be good well into your <laughs> old age Exactly. Like, They'd be like, they get it from her mama. It's true, right? Right. And it's the same well, thing about my grandma because I'm thicker than my mother ever was. So I'm like, I don't, I think I was grandma. Maybe I got grandma size back in the 70s when she was popping. I don't know. Because <laughs> you popping in the 2000s. <laughs> yeah, she must have been popping. Yes. Because I'm like, she was always, my aunts were always very beautiful, though. And, you know, my great aunts, they were older, obviously, when I came along. But they were just these gorgeous little white haired ladies with like this cute. They were just so cute, but they were so Brooklyn. Like they will cuss you out so fast. It's like, don't let the cute looks fool you. They were just the cutest little old ladies. <laughs> you know what, um, Nicole, since uh, Miss Rita is actually still listening to the show, I want to ask you a question because you are, you, I think as a, a younger woman, you are mm -hmm. so comfortable with yourself with being alone and living your life and yeah. so this reading yeah. show we discussed alone versus loneliness and yeah. what are your thoughts on the two yes well one I think upbringing probably plays a factor so I was I'm an only child so for uh, me okay. yes yeah, like you ex I was the only yeah. child but I was the only child I never yearned for siblings um I guess it helped that when we moved to Maryland from Brooklyn when I was five my mom met when she was signing me up for school she met another woman Mrs. Miller who had a daughter my age who became my best friend almost like a sister to me growing up so I never so you know after school I was at her house no I think my mom watched us after school my mom would watch the both of us so I always saw her name was Kim always saw Kimmy after school so I never felt um alone and she, you know my mother always had me in a lot of activities swimming girl scouts ballet tap so I was always you know I had cousins we had the New York family so I was always up there on the holidays so I never I never felt um a sense of loneliness even just growing up I always made friends easily. I always had a very positive group of girlfriends. Um, as I got older, I had guy friends, platonic. Um, so for me, I, I, I was raised in an environment of love and friendship and I never felt quote unquote alone, even being an only child. And so then even that translated, I guess, into adulthood, meaning I have so much I have so many peers, I have so many friends, acquaintances, associates, that it's almost to the point where it's overwhelming sometimes where I'm turning, I have to sometimes turn down invitations to certain things to actually be alone to recharge. Um, so I think that also helps. If I didn't, I often think of that. If I didn't have a strong um, family network, if I didn't have a strong friendship circle, I probably would feel lonely, right? Because if you're sitting at home alone and you don't have a social life, then you probably will have feelings of loneliness. But because I have such a huge network of friends and family, I don't have those lonely voids. I just don't. Um, so what would it take yeah. for... Because one of the things with me uh, being alone, mm -hmm. 
you know, because mm-hmm. I'm good with, I'm, I'm an only child as well. So I'm good with mm-hmm. being alone. But for me, my aloneness means freedom to do what I want when I want to do it without mm-hmm. caring mm-hmm. about what anybody else thinks or feels or needs or wants. I don't mm-hmm. have to worry about anybody else's anything. I can just do mm-hmm. what makes Xavier happy, you know? Absolutely. Um, and so uh, what do you think it would take for you to mm-hmm. settle down in a relationship and give up maybe maybe your guy would not want you to travel like you do or yeah. you know. yeah. and I always tell people I do all of these activities because I'm not in a serious relationship so if I was in a relationship with someone that um you know hopefully he would enjoy traveling too and that's something we could do together as a couple I'm not one of these people who's like I need my alone time I need to get away from me I mean, I do have times if I'm in a relationship where I need to recharge and if and that's why I like having my own place. Hey, listen, you know, I was dating this guy last winter. He always wanted me over his house. And then after two or three days, I'm like, hey, I do need to go home real quick, you know, to get a little bit of myself together. But um, for me, I would just want a guy that so since I have a pretty full life. It would take a man who just wants to add to that full life, meaning he wants, he doesn't have a lot of complications and problems. He's not bogged down by a bunch of children and can't get out the house, can't travel, can't do things. It would just take a guy that I actually really liked. That's all. It's not that um, I'm against uh, settling down. It's I haven't met anyone as of late that I want to settle down with. Uh, But if I met someone that was great and we got along well and we laughed and we could, you know, we enjoyed each other's company, then, hey, why not? Why not go on the ride together? But it's going to take someone that I actually want to be with because my life is good now. So I don't necessarily feel a need to be attached to someone unless they are just so amazing or doing, they're doing something, or they're giving me something, an experience that's so amazing, or, you know, sometimes you just click with a person, and it's effortless, and it's easy, Mm -hmm. Um, I guess that's pretty much where I'm at now, where's that guy at, you know, Um, definitely dating, definitely have guys on my line, always kind of have, but I'm not the type of woman that, uh, I have friends, and I kind of envy them, I wish I was the girl that fell in love easily, and loved everybody that said hello to me, because I'm just not, you know, I was just telling one of my girlfriends the other day, I'm like, you like everybody that likes you. I wish I did. Uh, show, me the guy at 7-11, show me the guy at 7-Eleven and be in love with him. And I'm like, damn, why that never happens to me? I'll meet the guy at 7-Eleven and be like, oh, okay, bye. Yeah, me you too. Know? <laughs> I don't like people easily. And it's not that I... um. And I, it's not that I dismiss them quickly. It's just, it's just a vibe for me. Like, I just like people that I can laugh with, that I can joke with. We can just have a good time with each other. There's no, I'm not pressuring you to be around me. You ain't pressuring me to be around you. We just like each other. And it's easy and it's effortless. And those type of guys, for me personally, don't come around super often like it do does for some other people. But I'm envious of those women because I'm like that you, you you guys like everyone and it works out for you and it, it may not work long term but you know she'll get like I was just telling my girlfriend I was like you just like so and so so she got rid of him she's really good she'll get rid of whoever she likes once they mess up and then she'll meet somebody else a month later and she'll be all in with them then he'll mess up she'll get rid of him and go but it's like wow you don't even need a recovery time you just keep going. <laughs> I said, I'm not mad at it, though, because if that is what works for you, then do that. <laughs> I'm not wired that way. Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure that's working for her, but I'll, we'll just let that go for now because we not, have no it's not ending in, um It's not ending in rela- real relationships. And, and in that real doesn't necessarily yet. have to be the goal, but okay. That's I don't, I don't want to get into a coaching session. So my, my the next thing I wanted to ask you, did you watch Bel Air? I thought some of it. I think I saw that first episode, and I think I need to go back because I was still focused on the old Fresh Prince, and it's so different. Um, Except I think that guy looks like like Will a little bit, but no one else looks alike. I'm like, to me, this is a whole new show. I kind of wish they maybe would have changed the names because I'm now looking at them like that. You don't look like Ashley. You don't look like Hillary. Like right, the comparisons in my mind were just too much for me. I think initially. So I need to go back because everybody I know loves it. I, I do really like it. And, you know, I grew up yeah. on Fresh Prince. That was definitely my era. But, um, you know, I think that the guy looks enough like Will where that's good. And and Will's mom yeah. 
looks enough like uh yes, the mom I on the show. So, yes, and, and so that that's that good. Too. But you know, uh Uncle Phil was, you know, that that dude, he a little small for my liking, but he a little sexy. <laughs> Uncle Phil was not sexy. But <laughs> no, at all. And Carlton, that is not Carlton. <laughs> That is definitely Absolutely. not Hillary. Not Hillary, not Ashley. <laughs> and you know, oh, I, I don't want to tell if you haven't seen it yet, but Ashley comes with a twist. I, you know, I don't know when you oh, get Oh yeah, twist. I haven't seen it. And um and Jeffrey is about it, about it. What the heck? I heard. <laughs> that is too funny to me. So yeah, I, I kind of like Bel Air. Uh, maybe you'll watch it before. Well, yeah, so I need to you, get the Peacock password, or I may have to get it just to watch that. Did you? Did you? So you've had the funeral and everything, so you'll be back on your stuff. You're getting back. Yeah. Well. Well. Right. We haven't even had no. Well, we're not having a funeral because he don't want one. But um, yes, we've been dealing with all that, trying to figure out what to do with the body and all that. Um, but yes, I gotta get. Um, I'll be back next week, and and then you know everything has been going on with the Ukraine. That's really all I've been watching on CNN. Oh well, tell, tell us a little bit about watched. that because I have I have not been watching that. So bring me up to date. Yeah. On that. So well, I haven't tuned in today. Um, but from what I've gathered last night, well, I think they're already in the capital city of Kiev or something with a K. I'm saying it wrong. Um, but yes. Yeah, so apparently the Russians. Long story short. They want to occupy this land again. I think it was a part of Russia, however many years ago. Then they became independent and they have been operating independently for many years now. So the people of Ukraine have a very strong sense of national pride. Um, they do not want to be associated with Russia at all. They do not want to, want to be under their leadership at all. Um, but I mean, I think the Russian forces, I know they had a 40 mile convoy that was approaching the capital city. I think the president of Ukraine is there in that capital city. He said he refuses to give up. He is not leaving his people. Um, and so the 40 mile convoy, Russian convoy had been stalled because they were running out of gas and food. But I think I saw though, they are get, they're getting closer though. They're still getting to that capital. They've been bombing the place like crazy. People are fleeing into surrounding countries. It's a mess. It's terrible. Um, yeah, it's terrible. You know, on the flip side of it, I'm like, well, you know, African countries deal with this every day and no one gives a damn. So. I don't know what the difference is, to be honest. You know, how many African countries are overtaken by dictators and millions of people are killed? Look at Rwanda. They allow genocide of millions of people before anybody lifted a finger. So I don't I don't really know. I don't know what to say. Yeah, that that is, oh, Lord, this world we live in. So mm -hmm. But Russia ain't no joke, though, with that. And I know they got a lot of nuclear stuff going on. Yeah. So I don't know. I know the U.S., we got to tread a little lightly with them because they yep. have a lot of power. We saw how they hijacked our election, how they will cyber attack anyone. And if they if we push them, they will shut this whole country down. So I think we're having and to we definitely don't lightly. want to have a war on our territory yeah. that is something that no and not with them with. of all people that's not who you want to mess with and i right. think they've allied with china these are two countries you really don't want to mess with too much because you know i mean it would probably just go to the worst because you got two soup you got superpowers uh-huh uh-huh everybody's that got everybody can push a button everybody can push yep. a button and so that's just not what neither anybody wants you know i was talking to my youngest daughter about that i'm like you know we got all this stuff going on and i just i just want every all of us to be together you know exactly. i got one daughter in dallas one daughter in minnesota i'm in chicago or milwaukee depending on the day and uh, uh, how are you liking being back in chicago x have you been like out and about well i'm i am primarily well in chicago uh -huh. however i am moving pretty much back to Milwaukee because uh, I'm, working on the house. I'm working on the house there. So I have a whole oh. house and I actually want to turn it into an Airbnb. Okay. So, okay. So you're working on, the, so you'll eventually go back there. Just to get the house together. I don't plan to live, live in Milwaukee. Um, I'm oh. going to always move around. Um, I really want to move somewhere warm, but again, you, you know, go to Dallas, you're your door. Dallas so, yeah. is beautiful. Yes. Dallas is beautiful. And I potentially might wind up in Dallas, um, but I'll probably go through Florida again, and I may even... You like the water, right? I love the water. There you go. That, um, right, Florida has that water. Yeah. I love the water, yeah. 
And uh, I like Vegas too, but you know, there's not oh, real water there either. Not real. Um, not real. Right. Just uh, in the backyard, the pool. A few of my friends uh, think that Atlanta would be a better spot for me since it's like the Black Hollywood and I have the yeah. shows and the radios and all that kind of stuff. So they're like, they feel like I'm more aligned there. But you know, we'll just see where the universe leads me. You know, I'm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so what about events in the dmv you been up on any of that stuff events lounge uh, restaurants no yeah. i don't know what's going on this weekend there well there's a white party uh saturday one of my friends invited me to in northwest i just don't i had never even heard of the venue before and i'm like wait white party already are we doing the white parties already <laughs> uh, <laughs> um i won't be in town anyway but um so i heard about that for saturday sunday again all of all of the, uh, dc is a very much a brunch town so any restaurant is going to have a nice brunch on sundays but yeah outside of that i haven't heard of anything really really different or grand happening <laughs> all right all right lady well i guess we will see you next thursday same time same place yeah sounds good all right well you have a great rest of your day okay you too x okay talk to you later bye-bye all right so that was our what's hot segment with miss nicole williams she was repping the dmv and we just wrapped up another great show we kicked it off with miss rita and ended it up with Miss Nicole. You can go to xaviafox.com backslash radio dash show for the schedule for the month of March. Yep, March is up on us. We are already in the third month of the year of 2022. It feels like it just came in and then there's a lot of stuff going on too. So go to the uh, website, Get the schedule for the month of March, and you can find out when your favorite personality or topic is scheduled to be discussed. The What's Hot segment on Thursdays is an opportunity for you. You can rep your city as a correspondent to share upcoming events, celebrity gossip, movies to Netflix and chill with, or a good book to curl up with. If you're interested, contact me at Xavier Fox at XavierFox.com. Be sure to visit my YouTube channel, Xavier Fox Media, and click subscribe. There are new shows popping up all the time. If you'd like to connect with me on social media, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, and soon on Fanbase as XAV as in Victor, I-A-F-O-X. That's Xavier Fox. My book, The Men in My Life and What I've Learned, is available on Amazon in Kindle format and paperback. You can also purchase an autographed copy on my website, XavierFox.com. Be sure to visit the website for information on all upcoming shows and events, as well as merchandise such as t-shirts and coffee mugs. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Tune in tomorrow. And I have a guest host, Mr. Reuben Hopkins, will be on the air in my place. Uh, a couple of your favorite personalities will be on tomorrow, Mr. Khalid Scott, who will be talking about love and children, and our girl, attorney April Prayer, and her special guest, Mr. Randolph Stone. I assure you, it will be a great show, and I'll be back on Monday. So until then, stay safe and be prosperous, and I'm out. <laughs>